My name's Tammy, and basically I really love HTML5, and I also really love mobile. Um, you can see the picture up there. That's of me in the rainforest in Cairns. And I just love like, being able to get out and go outside and go everywhere, but you can still have the internet with you, which is fantastic. And I absolutely love mobile technology for that, especially HTML5 and mobile web, because it's really quick and fast to load when it's done well. So today I'm going to talk a bit, I'm going to go through these different sections. So first off, we'll start with why you should know about HTML5 forms, uh, focusing on UI. And then we'll do a live demo, and then we'll do a syntax review, and then finish off with a code challenge. Should be fun. So first off, why you should know about HTML5 forms. So this is like what it looks like when people are using their phones, you know? They're sort of like walking down the street, there's like cars everywhere, there's people everywhere, there's so much happening, so much going on. And we have to remember that that's actually what it looks like. You know, it's not in this really nice environment where everything's really easy and you can concentrate really well. It's in a place where you've got so many different distractions happening all the time. So I think that's what we're going to talk about today is really going to help uh, people that are using your different apps be able to use them properly and use them quickly and efficiently. So from the W3C, um, Simon Peters and Anne Van Kesteren have listed like some of the new attributes uh, for HTML5 uh, input types. So we're going to go into a bit of that. So that's just the background of where that came from. And then Mark Pilgrim um, created his Diving Into HTML5 um, book, which you can read as well, which has a chapter on forms, which is really great. And it goes through all of these different things, which you can, I definitely recommend reading. It's great to check out if you haven't already. And Mike Taylor uh, created this great page, which you can go and see what's supported across all of the different uh, browsers, which is also really handy. And you can see there, that's one of the pages that he's created. So you can actually see what different things are actually going to work for you across different browsers um, and also here yeah, on mobile. And then I think Modernizer is also really handy for this too. Because say if you're using uh, like an input type or something like that or validation that isn't going to work um, on like your form, then what you can do is you can use Modernizer to have really nice JavaScript fallbacks. So because the way this works is it's going to degrade gracefully in the browser. So even if you put these new input type attributes in, they're still going to work um, with older browsers, but it'll just be you know, something basic. So you can use Modernizer to really make it something cool. And it's cool that Farouk's here as well, so that's great. And I guess, why use HTML5 form features? So why would we want to do this? I think one of the most important things, what I'm always thinking is, you know, it's the future, like mobile and tablets, they're so important. I'm one of those people that I pretty much don't use my laptop unless I'm writing code. Um, I'm always on my mobile phone, even though it's not even that convenient sometimes. I read on my mobile phone or a tablet. You know, I'm going, I'm checking everything. I always would prefer to probably look at something on my mobile, and if it doesn't work, then I'll use my laptop. So sometimes it's cool to think about, you know, how can we make sure that things work great on mobile? Um, and I think it also makes it a lot easier for people who are on the go uh, and who, you know, don't have that much time. They want to do something quickly, especially with a form. So we've talked a bit about why you should know about HTML5 forms. So now I just want to do a bit of a live demo. OK, well, that's really big, but that's all right. OK, so I've used the um, initializer template. Just thought that would be cool to demo that as well, because I really like that. It's based on the HTML5 boilerplate. Um, it's responsive web, and some people like that, some people don't. But I think it's really cool um, thing that you can easily create. And you can see if you change the browser width, like it will change. Um, and also what I like is that I've then also used PhoneGap. Uh, so that's this phone here, is using PhoneGap. So I've got the same code um, just from that index.html page. And I put that um, into Xcode. I'm using PhoneGap. And you can see the forms there as well. Uh, so if we compare side by side. You can see that, yeah, you know, you still got the same sorts of things that I'm doing there. So different things like um, placeholder text. Uh, you know, 
I've also got here date picker. Uh, looks a bit different, as you can see when you've got it over this side. Um, and then you can see down here, there's a number picker as well. Which So sometimes these things look a bit different across mobile and browsers, um, but that's pretty cool to see as well. Okay, and then I'll just show you the code as well. So it's just really simple code, which is what I'm going to go into a bit more as well now. So, oh, that form as well, I forgot to explain. So, one of my big things that I love as well is finding out what people are making. So, I thought I'd just make that as the demo because um, I have this blog that I created a while ago and I always love collecting stories of what people are creating, like designers and developers, and it's called Making Stuff is Fun. Um, and I do video interviews and things like that. And so, I thought, oh, I'll create a little form that could help people submit what they were working on and what they were making. So, that's where that came. So now we've done, we've looked at why you should know about forms, and then we've done a live demo. I thought it'd be cool to look into the syntax. So first one, it's required fields. So if you look at this, uh, just on there I've got what I've got from PhoneGap. Um, and you can see the, the required fields that I wanted. You don't get um, like notification or anything like that, but you do get validation on the web version. So I think it's interesting to see the differences there as well that you can notice. Uh, so that's like automatic as well. So it'll just say, please fill out this field. Like I didn't have to add anything else except for just the word required. So that's all you need to add for that to work. And so if we look at date picker, you just have to say the input type is equal to date. And then you're going to get your date picker, um, which is just there. And on web, it's not going to work, um, the same as it would on mobile. But I think, you know, if you're using input type is equal to date on mobile, that's really handy because it's really easy for somebody to quickly just scroll through and use the native um, like date picker. And placeholder text. So you can see there the different examples across mobile and web. Um, and to be able to set that is also really simple. You just need to add placeholder equals and in quotation marks, whatever you'd like the placeholder text to be. And it'll work across web and mobile. And the next one is number. So for this I've got, you know, how many team members might you have? And so on the web version, you'll have um, the little spinner there, the number spinner. And just on the mobile version, it'll just let you input whatever number. Um, but it does change the actual keyboard, so it gives you a number um, custom keyboard that allows you to input numbers more easily. And that's just by saying input type is equal to number. And then if you like, you can also set the range. So you can say the min value, the max value, um, and what you'd like it to be displayed as when they first load it, which is really cool too, I think. And the next one's number slider. So I thought, hey, maybe something like, how complete is your project? How much is it done? Uh, let me know that. And I saw like, um, that Anson used the sliders as well, which looked really cool for his page. So that's how it looks on mobile and on web, which looks pretty similar. And that's input type is equal to range, um, and setting the min and the max. And then you can step by different amounts as well, and you can set what you want your initial value to be. So I'd set the initial value as 10, which is why it was a little bit above zero. The next one is custom keyboards. So when I was going through those different examples, um, you could see there that different keyboards would pop up, which is really handy. So if you're on a mobile phone, like I know, I think my favorite one that I've seen recently is um, the Tell one. So I've seen people use that for, instead of having a password, like letting people enter a pin number and then using the Tell keyboard, 
which is pretty cool. And then URL, uh, it'll give you the .com and the slash by just saying input type is equal to URL. And we've got uh, just normal text there, and then also your number, which gives you the numbers across the top. And I think that's a really handy thing to be able to use for people. It just makes life so much easier. And so here's an example of that. That's input type is equal to URL. And that's all you have to do to grab that URL um, keyboard and get it to work. So the next one's autofocus. Uh, so with autofocus, so on the web, uh, what it's going to do is basically like when you go to google.com and it's automatically going to put your cursor in the search box. On mobile, it doesn't work because that would be kind of weird. It wouldn't really be so great. Um, but it's just going to degrade gracefully anyway. But what they do recommend is having a JavaScript fallback for that as well. And so to add autofocus is just adding the word autofocus, which is really easy. So now I thought we could look at some validation as well. Um, so with this, I've just got the example of uh, different ones from the web version and then from the mobile. So automatically on the web version, you're going to get that validation. So you're going to get those little messages that pop up just by what I've shown you today, just by entering those simple things like type is equal to, um, you know, type is equal to URL. Please enter a URL. And it's going to validate that. So it's going to look for the HTTP and the dot something. You know, it's looking for that, those sorts of things. And with email as well, it's going to be validating that too, which is really great. So it's going to look for your at and your dot, uh, your domain as well, which I think that's really handy. And uh, same thing with the range, which I explained before, how you could set a min and a max. So there it's going to actually say to you, uh, value must be less than or equal to 10, because I set that the max value was 10, which is really handy too. I think it's nice that it does that sort of stuff for you. And so that's just an example again. That was where I had input type is equal to email. So it's all really quite easy to do, I think. Like these are the sorts of things that we could implement today um, and they're going to work. And if they don't work, then they can degrade gracefully or you can use modernizer to make them work. So it seems like a great thing that you could go out and do and really enable people to have a really great um, experience when they're using mobile apps, which I think is really good. So we've talked a bit about why you should know about HTML5 forms. And then we went through our live demo. And then we did a syntax review. And now I thought it'd be cool to do a bit of a code challenge. So, uh, basically, like in my spare time, I work uh, for codeschool.com because I really believe uh, strongly in documentation and screencasting as a way to help people learn. And Farouk was talking about that this morning as well, that it's really important for people to get out there and create documentation and share with people and teach people. And part of what we do at Code School is this format, so going through having a live demo, doing a syntax review, and then at the end setting a code challenge. And a code challenge is a chance for you to take what's been uh, shown today and then actually create something fun, just like hack around, because I love to hack and I think it's really fun to do. And it doesn't even have to take you that long, and it could just be something fun and simple that you could share. And I'd love to be able to collect the different things that people have created and write a blog post and just be able to show different types of forms that people have made that work on mobile. I think that would be a cool thing to share. Uh, so basically, I think uh, the initializer responsive web template, if you haven't tried that out, you could try that out. Um, if you want, it's pretty cool. I like it. And then that's on GitHub. And then uh, you could add a HTML5 form by looking at the different input types and attributes and add something cool. Like I've done a pretty you know, standard sort of demo, just showed a few different things. But it'd be fun to see something funny or like awesome that you've created. Um, and then you could share it. So you could tweet it or share, it, uh, share a photo or a screenshot of what you've created uh, with the hashtag. 
and I'll go through and I'll look at those different ones and try and find them so then I can put them together into a blog post because I'd love to be able to do that. Because uh, when I was looking around to try and find some really cool examples, uh, I couldn't find anything that was that awesome and I'd love to just be able to have some really cool things to share with people. I think that would be great. And most importantly, have fun, always. <laughs> <laughs>